Jesus Christ. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we come to the fourth Sunday of Great Lent. We celebrate the memory of our Holy Father, St. John of the Ladder. And St. John, in his own great struggles, he entered his struggles at a very young age and then began to write about his own experiences and to see how his own experiences could penetrate into the hearts of other people. We understand ourselves through other people and we understand other people through ourselves because none of us are so unique as we think we are. But yet we all have similar struggles, trials, tribulations, joys, happiness, rejoicing. All of us are so alike in so many ways because we all share a common human nature. Uh, in the creation within the life of the church there is no race, there is no nationality, there are no differences. We are all of one common human nature together and so we are all as one and we were separated against one another and the story in the Bible is about the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel as it's called. It's a story that tells us that we became from one people divided and separate and sometimes turned against each other. This happened in so many ways throughout our history and we began to think more of ourselves than we ought to and yet we're told that we're all made one again in Christ Jesus. For the healing from the tree in the Garden of Eden was the cross of Christ. The healing from the Tower of Babel is Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descends upon us and makes us one again. And this is a part of our struggle too, is to know each other from what we know about ourselves and to know ourselves from what the interaction of other people together with us. Because true life, the life in this world, is a life with other human beings, with other people. But truly the purpose of life is to love and be loved. And at the highest level to love and be loved by Jesus Christ. And, but always to love and be loved. This is really the meaning of life. And our Holy Father John of the Ladder shows us in his book called The Ladder of Divine Ascent how many things there are that separate us, that make us feel like enemies one with another? And how many things that we do in this life, and we, we call them sin, but if we look at what they really are, they're things that cause division and separation. They divide us and separate us from our Lord Jesus Christ. Though nothing can separate us from His love, our love becomes dim. And because of our loss of love, we become separated. And also from one another, through various means of things that we do, things that we think, the way we want to think someone is different, sometimes a different nationality, a different race, or there's something different about them. So we want to put a wall between us and them. And every time we do that, we put a wall between ourselves and our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel today is one of the most beautiful of all of the readings from the Gospel, I think, poignant as we would say in English. The father brings his son, obviously afflicted with epilepsy because of the symptoms. And he's desperate to have his son healed. He's desperate that his son not be destroyed by his illness. And our, our Lord Jesus Christ says, well, if you have faith, and he says, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Lord, I know my belief is weak. I know my faith is weak. But if you will, you can strengthen my faith. Give me enough faith and belief that my son might be healed. For this is foremost in his thoughts. Like the Canaanite woman who came to Jesus Christ and said, But the dogs eat from the crumbs of the master's table. 
Her faith was born of love. And today this man who brings his son to our Lord Jesus Christ, his faith is given, strengthened by love. This, in both cases, these people had faith because of their love for their children, because of their love for someone else. And that faith was perfected by our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what he cries out today, Lord, I believe, but perfect my belief. Bring it to its fullness. Today also we hear uh, in the Apostle reading, again how our Lord Jesus Christ becomes a priest wherever after the order of Melchizedek. That our Lord Jesus Christ is the true priest of the church. But who else are the true priests? The ones who fulfill the priesthood of Christ visibly in the church before us except those like St. John of the Ladder, who had such great and profound faith that he became prophetic. He was a holy prophet because he could see the hearts and the souls and the minds of, other, of human beings. And he left us behind the ladder of divine ascent, the way a doctor writes prescriptions for people when they're ill and need healing. But when we read the ladder of divine ascent, let us think, that we're reading the prescriptions that have been given to us by a spiritual doctor who has penetrated into our hearts and our souls to the grace of the Holy Spirit by the greatness of his faith and the greatness of his struggle. And why should we choose, why should the church rather choose to give us the reading of St. John of the Ladder on this Sunday, which is really midway through the past? Because we see that in post, in the past, we've been trying to climb a ladder. We've been trying to start at the bottom and work our way toward the top. Sometimes we keep the fast to the best of our ability, but not perfectly. And we start to worry about whether or not we've eaten the wrong thing or, or maybe had milk or something during the Lent. But let's put that aside for the moment. And think about the real ladder that we're trying to climb in this great Lent. The ladder we're trying to climb is a spiritual fast, but we have to combine spirit and body because we are soul and body together. But the spiritual part of the great Lent is the greater part of it. Fasting from certain foods, of course, sharpens us. It gives us self-control and self-discipline. It helps us to put ourselves spiritually also into the fast. And too often the spiritual part of it is forgotten by people reading the label on something to see if there's a little bit of whey powder or something in it that, that perhaps they shouldn't have. While we're busy splitting hairs and worrying about the physical fast, the spiritual fast is all the greater. And the spiritual fast is set before us. And this is a ladder that we're trying to climb. And so the church has given us on this day to commemorate St. John Climaca, St. John of the Ladder, so that we might see the ladder which has been set before us and realize that every year we have to start at the bottom and climb toward the top. If we try to start halfway up, then we haven't made any ascension, we haven't risen at all. If we try to start at the top, the only way we can climb is down. So we have to start at the bottom and begin to climb upward in this spiritual fast, which is the fast of cleansing our hearts and our souls through repentance about our own sin and not repent, trying to repent for our brothers and sisters. So often people will say, and even in confession, well so and so did this and that and it made me angry or irritated me. Well, alright, but let's have you confess for your own sins, not for your brother's sins. Help me to see my own sins and not to judge my brother. For blessed art thou. We say it over and over again in the prayer of St. Abba Ephraim the Syrian. And here when we come to the ladder of divine ascent, let us remember that we are starting at the bottom and beginning to climb up. But this is a spiritual ascent. The physical fast helps in the spiritual fast. But unless we focus mostly and with all of our strength on the spiritual part of the fast, we accomplish very little 
except cleansing our body of fats and cholesterol during the Lent, because it, it's a healthy thing to do. But it's far more healthy to cleanse our conscience, to cleanse our heart, to get a hold of ourselves as we truly and really are, <coughs> not to have to live an inauthentic life, but to live a life in relationship with other human beings and to try to find love and trust amongst ourselves and realizing that ultimately the <coughs> purpose of life, the meaning of life, is to love and be loved. And we try to climb toward feeling a sincere love for our Lord Jesus Christ as we feel his love toward us. And then to expand that outward to the love for other human beings as well. And this is the greater part of Great Lent and of the fast. Because when we see our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and in the tomb on Great and Holy Friday, we realize that on the cross, when our Lord Jesus Christ stretched out his arms to all humanity <coughs> to call them to himself, we saw the greatest possible example of unselfish love, of co-suffering love with mankind. That to be nailed to the cross, to suffer all these things. It was necessary for us to see and to witness those things in order to understand the immensity of the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and how completely unselfish, how completely co-suffering that love is and sets an example for us. So the ladder we're trying to climb is to come somewhere close to the love that our Lord Jesus Christ has for all of humanity. First of all, for our neighbors and those close to us, and then for all of humanity. And to recognize once again that there's one single common nature of all mankind. And so there can be no divisions between us in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we fall short of that, we can also cry out with tears like the man in the gospel today, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Yes. 